SN27 is called normal distributions and 27.1 would be normal curves. So um, this first page of 27.1, I'm actually going to start or just post as a like reading passage for you to read through. So that'll include um, everything from this point all the way down to the bottom of this first page. And then after that, we're going to get into the examples for the video. So if you haven't already read this page in the passage, make sure you read it before continuing on with this video. Okay, so moving down, um, proportions under the normal distribution. So normal distributions, um, if you read the passage, they are symmetric, kind of like bell curve type shape with the median, or sorry, excuse me, the mean in the middle. And um, the rest of the data is organized in terms of uh, how many standard deviations they are away from the mean. So um, this picture right here is very, very important to um, add to your notes and just make sure you're doing a good job with how you're drawing it so that it's nice and clear um, when you go to refer back to it because it's something that you'll use in a lot of different examples um, in this lesson. Okay, so um, for this curve, the mean is in the middle. And then each of those bars, like the ones that say like plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two, those are saying um, how many standard deviations they are away from the mean. So like this whole section right here, that is one standard deviation above the mean. And then this whole section right here is one standard deviation below the mean. So each of those um, parts of the curve, they represent about 34.1% of the overall group, the population, whatever it is. Um, and then added together, they make up um, about 68.3%. And if you're like, okay, wait, those that doesn't add up. 34.1 plus 34.1 would be 30 or 68.2, not 68.3. All of these are approximations and they were all much longer decimals that got rounded. So um, like 34.1, it rounded to that. But um, if we were to kind of like take the longer version of the decimal and add them together, it actually ends up being closer to 68.3. Um, for this se section in general, you see a lot of approximations and that's just what they are. They are approximations. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much if you are getting things that are maybe a tenth or two tenths off from my answers or from answers elsewhere. Um, you'll just pick the closest one. And like I said, it should be close. It should, be, it should have the same whole number, um, but the decimals may be a little bit off. Okay, and then moving to this section, this one goes up to um, 0.2 above the mean. And then this section over here extends to 0.2 standard deviations below the mean. And the standard deviations can vary. So it's not like the mean plus one plus two, it's the mean plus one standard deviation, which can be really any number. Um, and then that whole range from two standard deviations below the mean to two standard deviations above the mean, that will make up 95 point or approximately 95.4 percent of the data is between two standard deviations of the mean and then the next section extends out to three standard deviations above the mean and three standard deviations below the mean and of all the data that goes from three standard deviations below the mean to three standard deviations above the mean that takes up approximately 99.7 percent of the data so almost all the data and then you'll see there's these little slivers over here on the far left and far right. That's anything beyond three standard deviations, which in a normal distribution, there will not be much. That's why they're so small. Um, they make up about 0.1% each of the data um, or just that last little portion of a percent to get up to the full 100%. So all of the data combined, of course, makes up 100%. And then we can use this curve to figure out um, what percentages of populations will fall under certain standard deviations away from the mean. So that doesn't have to mean a whole lot yet, but hopefully after the examples, it'll make more sense. Okay, so example one, it says find the area outside of two standard deviations above and below the mean. So we'll do this two different ways. You can decide which way makes more, more sense to you. So two standard deviations above the mean is right here and two standard deviations below the mean is right here. So um, if we wanted to, so it says find the area outside of them. So if we needed to find the area inside, it would be like everything in between the lines. Since we're finding the area outside of them, it'll be everywhere to the like left of negative two and everywhere to the right of positive two. So we would do 0.1 plus 2.2 plus 2.2 plus uh, 0.1. So that's one way. So we'll do 0.1. I 
I'm just going to leave the percent symbols off for now. Plus 2.2 plus 2.2 plus 0 0.1. So if we add all those up together, it ends up being approximately 4.6% of the data will be above or below um, two standard deviations away from the mean. Um, the other way of finding it is we know that like all of the data is 100%. So if we know all of the data is 100% and the area inside of two standard deviations is 95.4%, we can do 100 minus 95.4 and 100 minus 95.4 is also 4.6%. So you get the same answer either way. Um, it really just comes down to like personal preference. Um, if you want to add up each one individually or use like what we know the inside is and subtract it to get the outside. Subtract it from 100 to get the outside. Okay, example two. Jessica, record, Jessica records a random sample of time it, of the time it takes people to cross the street in a crosswalk. The sample has a normal distribution with a mean of 22 seconds and a standard deviation of 3 seconds, approximately what percentage of people cross the street in 25 seconds or less. Okay, so in the picture or in our like kind of bell curve right now, we have just the mean in the middle and then standard deviations increasing um, to the left and to the right. That's what the plus one, plus two, plus three is and so on. If we want, like in this case, we have like kind of a more real life situation. We can recreate that curve, but with the actual mean and the actual standard deviations put in there. So what I mean by that is it's kind of tight. So I'm just going to actually like white out the numbers. So the mean it says is 22 seconds. So where mean was, I'm going to put 22. And then it also says the standard deviation is three seconds. So if I want to figure out what should go where the plus one standard deviation is, I need to add a standard deviation to 22. So I would do 22 plus three because the standard deviation is three to get 25. And then I could just continue to kind of like add three, add three, add three to go up on my or to go to the right. So if I want to go two standard deviations away, I would add three again. That would be 28. If I need to go three standard deviations away, I would add three again. That would be 31. And then if I want to go down, I need to subtract the standard deviation. So minus one standard deviation would be 22 minus three. So 19. Minus two standard deviations would be minus three again, so it would be 16. Minus three standard deviations would be minus three again, so that would be 13. And then the question itself is asking approximately um, what percentage of people cross the street in 25 seconds or less. So for crossing the street at 25 seconds, that's right here. And then everything less than it is going to be everything to the left. So 25, 22, 19, and everything in between. So if we want to find um, what percentage of people cross the street in 25 seconds or less, we need to add all of those percentages together. So it would be 34.1 plus 34.1 plus 13.6 plus 2.2 plus 0.1. So 34.1 plus 34.1, I'll add the percent symbol after, and then plus 13.6, and then plus 2.2, and then plus 0 0.1. If we add all of those up together, it ends up being 84.1%. So approximately 84.1% of people um, cross the street in 25 seconds or less. So in this example, we were able to figure out um, the percentage of people who cross the street in 25 seconds or less, specifically because 25 was an exact standard deviation away from the mean. So like how um, when we labeled this portion with the mean and then the like plus three, plus three, plus three to get the standard deviations above and then minus three to get the standard deviations below, 25 was an exact number on there. Um, but if I had kind of asked the same question and it was approximately what percentage of people cross the street in let's say 20, like three seconds or less, because 23 seconds is not exactly a standard deviation away from the mean, we can't approach it the same way because even if I like try to approximate, like, so say 23 is right here and I tried to approximate 
like just this portion. We can't exactly say that like 23 is exactly what's well, like not exactly halfway, but either way, we don't really have a way of approximating what portion of that 34.1% is actually shaded or is actually covered by that 23. So you can only use this method um, when you have like an exact uh, distance away from the mean in terms of standard deviations. So when you don't, that's where 27.2 comes in. So 27.2 has got other areas under the curve um, and the distance that you are away from the mean, um, that's something that's measured by z-score. And so for example, like um, our distance of 25, that was like, a z, it would have a z-score of one, positive one, because it was one uh, standard deviation above the mean. Um, really where this next session talks about is like when we're not we don't, when we don't have a whole number z-score or an integer z-score where we don't have a decimal. So um, standard normal values, also known as z-scores, um, z-score or a z-score is a measure of how far from the mean a point is, and it's measured by standard deviations. So for example, if a point is two standard deviations above the mean, the z-score would be two. If the point is three standard deviations below the mean, the z-score would be negative three. So even though um, z-score is measuring like a distance, it can be positive or negative to show that um, whether it's above the mean or below the mean. The formula for finding the z-score is z equals x minus, that symbol's uh, called mu, and then divided by sigma, which is the standard deviation. So z for z-score, and then equals x, which is um, the observed data for which you're trying to find a z-score, so like whatever you're given in the problem, um, and then minus the uh, population mean, which like in that little symbol, it's called mu, like the Pokemon. Um, so minus mu, and then divided by sigma, which is the standard deviation. Okay, so example one, you received a test score of 80. The test you took is normally distributed with a population mean of 65 and a population standard deviation of 10. What is the z-score of your test? So the formula for z-score is z equals x minus mu and then divided by sigma. So x is like the observed value, like in this case, it's your test score. So you received a test score of 80, so we'll put 80 in for x. And then minus mu, which is the population mean. In this case, the population mean is 65, so we'll put that in for mu. And then um, divided by sigma, which is standard deviation, which is 10 in this case. So standard deviation, sorry, standard deviation will go in for sigma. So it'll be 80 for x minus 65 for the population mean, mu, and then divided by the standard deviation, which is 10. So um, 80 minus 65 is 15, and then 15 divided by 10 is 1.5. So we ended up with a z-score of 1.5, and that means that our test score is 1.5 standard deviations away from the mean. So I have a little visual of like this z-score on the bell curve to the right. So z-score is right here. And if we wanted to treat this problem like this one up here, we wouldn't be able to really find an exact answer because we don't know what portion of um, its like kind of individual section our z-score lands. So what I mean by that is like up here, we know that that section from, hold on, from here to here is 13.6% of the data, um, but we don't exactly know how much of that data is like before or after our um, z-score because it's not really like um, equal, you know, like this portion is definitely bigger than this portion over here. So when you don't have a, or sorry, when your z-score is not like an integer, so it's like a positive or negative number with no decimals. Um, when it's not an integer, you have to use something called like a z-score table to find the percentage that's beneath that z-score. So in this case, we would have to do something like that. So moving down to um, z-score tables, um, they're like very overwhelming to look at at first. I get that. This isn't even really the whole table because uh, these only go to negative 1.8 
and positive 1.8. It, of course, like expands beyond that, like past three even, but these will be good for the purpose, but just know like I get it. Like they're crazy to look at at first, but we'll just kind of take our time in learning how to read them. So to find um, the area of data under non-integer z-scores, you can use a z-score table. So again, non-integer is like something with a decimal. Um, so if we have a decimal z-score, we can use these tables. The next part is how to read the table, so it's really important. The left column of the table displays the first digit and first decimal of the z-score. So left column. The tables um, are kind of showing the same thing. They just have different z-scores listed on them because they're obviously very big tables. And then um, the top rows display the second decimal place of the z-score. So top rows, the second decimal place. So for example, if I had a z-score of let's say negative 0.2, uh, I don't know, four. So negative 0.24 is my z-score. So to look at what's in the like ones place and the tenths place, I would look at the column on the left. So I would look at where it's negative 0.2, which is right here. And then to look for the like hundredths place, I would look at the top row, which is, I have a four in the hundredths place, so it would be right here. And my um, percentage would be where those numbers overlap. They have them as decimals, but we can convert them to percents as well. Okay, so these next examples will really get into like how to use these z-score tables. So example two, the average cost of dishwashers sold by an appliance company is $502 with a standard deviation of $84. Assume that the company's dishwasher prices are normally distributed. You decide to purchase a dishwasher from this company for $400. What are the, or what percentage of dishwashers sold by this company are sold for less than $400? So in order to figure out how, um, many dishwashers what percentage are less than that 400 which we spent we have to find the z-score of what we spent um which the z-score is just showing you know how much did our cost vary from the mean so the z-score formula i'm just going to sneak it up here is z equals x minus mu and then over sigma so x is like in its case it's the cost of our dishwasher so uh, we paid $400, so we'll put 400 in for X. And then mu is the population mean, which th that's like average. So the average cost of the dishwasher sold by this store was $502. So we'll put that in for mu. And then sigma is the standard deviation. So it says the standard deviation is $84. So when we put all that together, we'll have Z equals X. So 400 and then minus mu, so 502, and then divided by 84, the standard deviation. So 400 minus 502 is negative 102, and then negative 102 divided by 84, so negative 102 divided by 84 is negative 1.214 and so on. Um, so we only really need to go to two decimal places because that's all that our table goes up to. So we'll say Z is approximately um, negative 1.21. Um, that four in the like third decimal place is less than five, so we don't need to round up. So our Z score is negative 1.21. So just to kind of create a visual of that, that would end up something like about right here. And we're looking for um, what percentage were sold for less than 400. So everything less than $400 would be to the left of our z-score. So over here. So kind of seeing that visual sometimes is very helpful in like getting an idea of how much or what percentage will be less than 400 because that's a pretty small section of our bell curve. So we should have a fairly small percentage, definitely less than 50%, probably less than 25%. Okay, so we have our z-score, it's negative um, 1.21. So the first, or like the whole number in the first decimal, that's gonna be on the column on the left, and then the second decimal is gonna be the row on the top. So we're gonna look for a negative 1.2, so that's right here. So negative 1.2. Sorry, I was like kind of in the way. Let me see, no, okay. So negative 1.2 is right here. 
And then to get that one that's in the second decimal place, we go to the top row. So we look for where there's the one in the top row, which is right up here. So we look at where those two, the row and the column overlap, which is this part right here. So they overlap at 0.11314. So we'll say approximately 0.11314. 314 and then I just want to convert that to a percent so um, we'll say approximately if I want to convert this decimal to a percent I have to move the decimal place twice to the right um, I'm just going to round to one decimal place after um, so it'll be approximately 11 point or sorry point three percent of the dishwashers they sold will be less than that four hundred dollars so then kind of going back to what I was saying about like approximating or like making sure that it makes sense in context um, a, a z-score of negative 1.21 and then having to be less than that is really not going to leave that much of the like overall percentage um, just based on like our bell curve graphic. So 11.3% makes sense in context. If you've got something weird like or something a lot bigger, maybe like 60%, you know, it really wouldn't make sense because like our visual shows that it doesn't create or it doesn't take up that much space under the curve. Okay, so um, moving on to example three. So Sarah and James recently took a standardized math test that is normally distributed with a mean of 120 and a standard deviation of 35. Sarah earned a score of 166 and James earned a score of 128. What percentage of test takers scored between the scores of Sarah and James? So this time we have two scores to think about. That means we're gonna have two Z scores as well, one for each student, Sarah and James. So we'll start with um, Sarah. So for Sarah, her Z-score, we're going to take the score that she got on her test, which was 166. So 166, and then we're going to subtract the average of scores on the test, which was, um, let's see, the mean of 120. So minus 120. And then divided by the standard deviation, which was 35. So 66 minus 120 is 46. And then we'll do um, 46 divided by 35. So 46 divided by 35 is about um, 1.314. But we just need to go to two decimal places, so approximately one3 one is the z-score for Sarah. So she would be um, like about right here, 1.31, so in between one and two, but a little bit closer to um, one. And then for James, we'll find his z-score too. So um, his, we'll start with his test score, which was 128. So we'll do 128 minus 120 divided by 35 so 128 minus 120 is 8 and then divided by 35 so we'll do 8 divided by 35 is approximately uh, 0.2285 so that one we will have to round up so it'll be 0 0.23 because the 8 is going to round that second 2 up to a 3. So um, James' z-score is just a little bit above the average or the mean. So about right here. And the question is asking um, what percentage of test takers scored between the scores of Sarah and James? So if we look up the score for um, Sarah's z-score, if we look it up on the table, it's going to give us all or the percentage of test takers that were beneath Sarah. And then if we look up James's z-score on the table, it's going to give the percentage of test takers beneath James. So if we subtract those two, we do like Sarah's minus James, it's going to give us that difference in the middle. It's going to give us how many are in between them. So I'm just going to create a little like, note here that we'll do Sarah. Uh, I'll just say Sarah's number minus James's number, it'll be like who scored higher minus who scored lower to get who scored in between them. 
And then now we just need to find each of their z-scores. So Sarah's was, uh, or not z-scores, but um, percent from the z-score table. So Sarah's z-score was 1.31. So the first two numbers were 1.3, and then the second number, or the second decimal is 1. So to find that, We'll go to 1.3 on the z-score table. Notice now I'm on the positive side, so it's a positive 1.3. And then the second decimal place was a 1. So on the top, I'll look for the like 0 0.01, and then we'll see where they overlap. Um, and that's at 0 0.9049. So for Sarah's percent, do 0 0.90490. And that's the percentage of people who scored um, less than her because she got a pretty high score compared to the mean so there is a high percentage about 90% of students who scored less than her and then for James um, his z-score was 0 0.23 so um, the first two numbers 0 0.2 so we'll look for 0 0.2 on the left right there again positive so we're on the positive table and then three was the second decimal place so we go to the like 0 0.03 up here Look at where they overlap, and that's at point nine or point five nine zero nine five. So for James, it'll be point five nine zero nine five. Let me just make sure I got it right. Yeah. So James is is right here. So point two three, and then Sarah's was over here, one point three one. And then from there we'll subtract them. So we'll do point. Nine zero four nine zero, and then minus point five nine zero nine five. So ends up being uh point three one three nine five, and then I'm just gonna convert it to a percent. So I'll move the decimal twice to the right, and then I'll round to probably just one decimal place after the or when it's in percent form. So we'll say approximately 31 point, um, this nine is gonna round the three up to a four. So approximately 31.4% of students scored between the two. So in order to figure out, you'll see some questions in the checkpoint and in the um, exam, on the exam. Um, in order to find like the percent that is between two values, you have to find each of their individual z-scores, find the percent for each one on the table, and then subtract the two.